Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with the Sound Blaster E5 because I had some trouble getting this configured on the Mac and it happened on all the Macs that I own. So I figured I would do a video to talk about how to get those problems resolved and also show you what the problems are. So let's take a look first at what happens with this device when you first plug it into a Mac. So uh, I'm, I'm just popping into my sound preference pane in the system preferences because I wanted to set that what you hear as our input device. And as you can see, when I click on it, it bounces right back up to line in, which is a big problem, right? Because you can't actually select what you want to listen to. Uh, so I reached out to Creative on this and they said what you need to do uh, is close this out first and then go to the audio MIDI setup, which is in the utilities folder inside your applications folder. So if we back out here to applications, uh, you'll see one of the icons that is in your applications folder is another folder called utilities. Uh, you click on that and then you look for audio MIDI setup. And when you click on that, you will get this screen. And you can see here, we've got the Sound Blaster E5 selected. Now the clock source on it is currently set to stereo direct. So if you switch it to DSP clock, uh, and then close this out and go back to your system preferences, uh, you should see a different option now, or at least have the options that you wanna click on clickable. Uh, so if I go back over here and scroll down to uh, what you hear, you'll see that that is now selected. I can go to the internal mic on the device, it's even picking that up now. Uh, so I have the ability now to select everything on that sound blaster uh, and the control panel will now also work with it too. But one problem I did run into with it is that I can't get the full audio quality that uh, this thing advertises. So let's go back and show our audio sources. You can see we've got it set to DSP clock. I am gonna close out the system preferences because uh, the system preferences will collide with the audio MIDI settings. So you need to have nothing accessing the device when you go through this configuration process inside of audio MIDI. Now you'll see here that we have the option on the output, because uh, it's going to default, uh, to go up to 192, but when I click on it, it bounces right back to 96. You cannot on the Mac at the moment, uh, at least for the DSP clock uh, uh, capability to be able to use the control panel with it, uh, you can't get beyond 96. If I go back to stereo direct, I can select that 192 kilohertz value. So I think there's just some kind of driver thing going on right now. Creative says Apple is at fault here, uh, and who knows? I mean, it's probably one of those things where maybe there's a bug in here and a bug there, and those two bugs are colliding or whatever, but uh, we'll keep an eye on things, and maybe if uh, you know, Apple has an update that addresses this problem, we'll see it get improved. But if you are having trouble or having the issues that I just showed you happen, uh, going in and repeating that process should work. However, you're not gonna get the 192 kilohertz output uh, when you set it to the DSP clock, but you will get it if you leave it on the stereo mode. Uh, that just disables all the control panel options from the creative configuration software. So a little bit of glitchiness on the Mac at the moment, but hopefully it will get fixed soon because otherwise it's a pretty good audio device. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.